I get comments about unboxing the newest Beyblade almost every single video. And if you guys are curious on why I don't unbox the newest Beyblades anymore, it's because everyone does it. Like, you can just watch Beyblade Geeks do it, or Zanki do it. I just don't feel the need to do it. But in today's video, I will make an exception. We are going to unbox every single, single layer burst Beyblade. That was a weird sentence. Anyway, we're unboxing the single layers and not the newest Beyblades because everyone asked me to unbox the newer stuff and I, I just don't like listening to people. It's, it's a very bad trait. But before I unbox these things, I just want to go through a quick rundown of the history behind these Beyblades. And also beg you to subscribe. P please, please subscribe. 70% of you guys are not subscribed. So if you're one of those 70%, don't do that. That's not cool. All right, now that... <laughs> Now that I said that dumb YouTube stuff, let's get started. So for those who don't know, the single layers were the original Burst Beyblades that were released even before the Beyblade Burst anime started airing in Japan. It was a small jumpstart to get people interested in the Beyblade franchise once more. That's why a lot of people like to refer to these Beyblades as prototypes for the Burst series. Once the anime came out, they remade almost every single layer into a dual layer and just stopped making single layers in general. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to unboxing. So of course, we are going to start with the original Valkyrie. You know, I've never actually owned like the proper colors of the single layer Valkyrie, which is crazy. Also, if you guys notice, there is a different packaging for these single layers compared to all the other Takara Tummy Beyblades. Usually they come in boxes, but these single layers come in like this weird, like kind of plastic container and the reflection on the light is terrible. So I'm sorry, you guys probably can't even see the Beyblade. Anyway, so in this product, we have Valkyrie Wing XL with the Proto Launcher. And I'm just gonna show you guys the back real quick. I'm not gonna show the back for most Beyblades. I just wanna explain the back for this first one and then we're never gonna be looking at it again. All right, so it just explains the parts. So as you can see, it says the layer, the disc and the driver. This time we have Valkyrie Wing XL. It shows uh, the launcher and the other launchers you can buy. The Proto Launcher is absolutely terrible and then it gives some stats on the Beyblade and a customized recommended combo. Alright now that we got that out of the way let's unbox this thing. Also I have an actual knife this time I don't have like uh, a kitchen knife or a butter knife which kind of scares me because I definitely do not trust myself with an actual knife. I'm gonna cut myself but I figured for this uh, I'm gonna be unboxing so much so I should probably use a knife. Okay. This is what I learned in bio class, guys. This is the only thing I remember. Cut away from yourself because if you cut yourself, that is very bad. Uh, I'm so bad with knives. My editor has like these pocket knives and he literally like just chucks them around places. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know how he does it. Okay, there's also some tape up here. Ah. There we go, we got it out. I <laughs> moved the camera too, oh no. All right, here we go. We don't really need to look at the proto launcher, that's kind of dumb, like no one wants to see that. But let's look at the actual Beyblade. Here we have Valkyrie, oh my God. God, I mean, these things are so small compared to like uh, the Beyblades we see nowadays, but I just think the colors look amazing. I mean, I said colors, but there's only three colors. You only have like the like glossy blue, the red, and the yellow eye, but I really do like the glossy blue. Oh yeah, something else to note about these single layers is that their teeth are very much different than the Beyblades we get now. As you see, the teeth are much thinner. The reason why they make the teeth thicker now is because the original single layers had a problem with their durability. If you use them too much, the teeth would wear out and the Beyblade would burst more often, and that's just not fun. Anyway, so yeah, I'm super excited to have Valkyrie. It was one of the best single layers I think for its time. I think it was the best attack single layer until Excalibur came out. So yeah, throughout the video I'm just gonna be talking about the parts and like what parts like stood out in the Beyblade and what parts were just trash. For instance, the wing disc. This thing is trash. It's terrible. And then finally we have the Excel driver and back in the day the Excel driver was probably the best 
uh, attack driver, surprisingly. Even though it's just like a flat driver, the reason why it was the best is because we didn't really get that many good drivers. Up until Excalibur, of course, where we got Extreme. But before that, we just had this, like, I think we had Quake and Blow. And Quake and Blow are terrible, so Excel was definitely the way to go for attack. Anyway, let me put this Beyblade together. Bolt's original Beyblade. Oh my god, wait, I didn't even do the last click. Oh, that's a tight click. All right, there we go. We have Valkyrie Wing Excel, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy I have one. I've actually never held an actual, like, correctly colored Valkyrie, so this is really awesome to add to my collection. Next on the list, we, of course, have Vault's rival, Shukur and I, with Spriggan. And oh my goodness, I actually do have a single layer Spriggan, but I've had it for so long. I think it was like the second Beyblade I ever got. I think I got Storm Spriggan first, and then I got single layer Spriggan. But yeah, uh, it's very worn out. The teeth are extremely worn out, so I'm definitely excited to have a new one. Let's open this guy up. I'm cutting towards myself. I'm sorry, bio teacher. Let's look at this single layer Spriggan one part at a time. First off, we have this Spriggan layer and the shape of this Beyblade is actually really cool. It's like an oval. So it definitely did get a lot of hard hits. Now the problem with Spriggan is although it has an amazing design, the teeth were kind of garbage. At least it wasn't good enough for the shape of the layer. As you can see, the layer is very aggressive and the teeth just weren't that great. So I remember when this Beyblade first came out and everyone versed it against Valkyrie, Valkyrie would destroy Spriggan just because Valkyrie had a really aggressive shape and good teeth and Spriggan's teeth were absolutely terrible. So it would burst all the time. But I do like the Beyblade. Like, of course I like Spriggan. It's a cool Beyblade. All right, next up we have the Spread Disc. Now, the spread disc was actually decent for its time. It had decent burst resistance because it was so flat. Nothing really else to say about it. Uh, it has a kind of ugly design, to be fair. Like, it's, <laughs> it's literally such a plain design. It's a circle, and then it has S's on it for spread. And then finally, we have the Fusion Driver, and I do really like the colors. It's a crimson red driver, which just looks sick. As for the Fusion Tip, though, it was never really that great. Um, it kind of struggled to be consistent because when you launched it, it was very hard to control. You couldn't control if it went to the center of the stadium or the outside of the stadium, and if it got hit, usually it went crazy. So not really the best tip in the game just because it was really unpredictable, but still a really fun tip. All right, and there we have it. Here is Spriggan Spread Fusion, and it's always so nice to have like Valkyrie and Spriggan next to each other. They just match, they look adorable. All right, let's move on to the next Beyblade. Next up, we have the original stamina type Beyblade, Ragnarok Heavy Survive. Anyway, let's unbox this thing. What? Huh? <laughs> I was cutting it, and the ripcord just came out. <laughs> First off, we have the Ragnarok layer, and this thing is actually really interesting. It does have a cool story behind it. Uh, the Ragnarok layer, at least the Karatomis, was never really that good. It kind of lived up to the Ragnarok name, where it just bursts all the time. And especially for a Stamina-type Beyblade, it has like these crazy like contact points. Usually Stamina-type Beyblades are supposed to be circular because that makes them more aerodynamic and spin longer. But for some reason, Ragnarok is like shaped like an attack type. Like it has these crazy smash attack points but the funny story behind it is when Hasbro made single layer Ragnarok they actually gave single layer Ragnarok crazy burst resistance like its slopes were insane so instead of using it like a stamina type Beyblade because it had such an aggressive shape people would just use it for attack combos and it was crazy good I think it was the best like Hasbro Beyblade layer for a while anyway but in Takara Tomy, uh uh, Ragnarok was kind of trash, which kind of lives up to the anime. It was very anime accurate. Rantaro was not very good. So yeah, again, the reason why it wasn't good is because it has a very aggressive shape for a stamina Beyblade, and its teeth just weren't amazing. Next up, we have the Heavy Disc, and this was the best disc for a really long time. I think it was the best disc until... I swear, I think it was the best disc until the god layers came out. Like, this in gravity, like, dominated the single and dual layer meta. Like, if you didn't know what disc to put on a Beyblade, you put heavy. Because added weight was just so powerful back in the day. It still is powerful. So yeah, this was definitely the best disc ever to be released in the single layer era. Next up, we have the Driver Survive. And this is a very basic driver. It's just a sharp driver. Although Takara Tomy didn't really make a better stamina driver until 
actually rising Ragnarok, the evolution of this Beyblade. They gave it, I think it was Revolve. And Revolve was definitely better than uh, Survive, but at the time, Survive was probably the best stamina driver. I mean, what other stamina drivers did we have? We had Survive and then Gyro on Jaeger Yggdrasil. I'm sure there's nothing. Oh, we had Claw on Screw Trident, but like out of those, I think Survive was the best just because it was very simple and it worked. So yeah, overall Ragnarok's combo, it's not that bad. It's just the layer was so garbage that everyone gives the single layer Ragnarok like no respect at all. The layer was just so bad, but the parts are actually like really good. You get Survive and Heavy, that's a good deal. We went over the first attack Beyblade, the first balance Beyblade, the first stamina Beyblade, and now we're going over the first defense Beyblade. Here we have Kerbius Central Defense. I think this and Valkyrie were probably the best out of the original four that released. So yeah, let's unbox this thing. So here we have Kerbius, and what I really like about its layer is that it is rocking that chain motif. The original gimmick behind Kerbius was that it was like a Beyblade made of chains, and as you see, uh, there is chains surrounding the whole entire Beyblade. Even the contact points are kind of shaped like chains, and I think that's really cool. So yeah, this Beyblade was pretty round, so it didn't burst that often, and its teeth weren't that bad, so it was one of the best single layers, at least for defense. Next up, we have the central disc, and there's really nothing to say about this disc. It's the most boring disc ever. I guess, like, the only thing cool about it is that it has, like, some indent, like, right here, which is supposed to make the Beyblade a little unbalanced, but it really doesn't do anything. It's not good, but it's not terrible. It's, it's just average. And finally, we have the defense driver, and I'm pretty sure the defense driver was one of the best drivers, at least in the single layer era. Again, just like Survive, it's very basic. It's just a bald driver but like that's all you need you don't really need that many gimmicks you just need something that works so the defense driver was definitely one of the most competitive drivers at least during this era all right so i think that's the end for kerbius it's really sad that they don't make new kerbius beyblades because it was the original defense type beyblade and who doesn't like kerbius also it's really sad that ken in the anime never returned after season one like really what's up with that i felt like he had like such good character development in season one and they just like never used his character ever again like it's I don't understand why, like, he was a light character. People liked Ken. They just never brought him back. Anyway, whatever. Let's move on to the next Beyblade. Next up, we have Death Scyther, and this guy was a complete monster. This layer was actually so good that Japan had to ban it from its tournaments, and the WBO banned it as well. Now, the reason why it was so good is because, as you see, it has an extremely round shape, and it is an attack type, which those two things usually don't go together. But for some reason, this attack type, Death Sight there, Takara Tomi decided to give it a really round shape. And the thing with attack types is usually they have really good teeth. And Death Sight there is no exception. So it was a Beyblade with a really round shape and amazing teeth. So basically people just put it on stamina combos and it would outspin every Beyblade and it wouldn't burst to anything. So yeah, it was just an extremely OP Beyblade, although the parts on the Beyblade, we'll go through them real quick. Next up, we have Oval, and Oval is, I want to say, like, the worst disc Takara Tomy ever released, besides maybe something like 11 or 12. It's just extremely light. I think it was made light, so the Beyblade can move around faster, like, so the attack tip can move around faster in the stadium, but the problem is, when it made contact with other Beyblades, the Beyblade was just so light with this disc that it would just go flat. And then finally, we have the Excel driver, and I already went over this driver on Valkyrie, but this time we have a nice purple one. So yeah, that is Death Scyther Oval Excel, and let me just say, I flippin' love Death Scyther's color scheme. I think the black and the purple just look so sick, like, definitely one of my favorite single layers, and definitely De Dark Death Scyther is... I want to say my second favorite dual layer. It's just so flippin' cool. All right, let's move on to the next Beyblade. Next up, we have Wyvern. And I think earlier in this video, I said Storm Spriggan was my first Beyblade. I actually think this was my first Beyblade. Wyvern Armed Massive. Now that I think about it, this was definitely my first Beyblade. So backstory time. I'm going to do the backstory while I unbox it. So Wyvern was my first Beyblade. The reason I chose it is because it came with a string launcher and I was reading stuff on the internet and they said that string launchers were better. But honestly, I kind of like the ripcord launchers better. And the reason why I like the ripcord launchers better is because when I got this Beyblade, I launched this Beyblade literally 
two times. I didn't have a stadium. I launched it on the floor. But yeah, and then the string launcher flipping broke. The string launcher broke after two attempts. And I was, I was like baffled. I was like, that's it. So literally what I used to do with this Beyblade is I used to just spin it with my hand on the floor. I used to just hand spin this Beyblade. And then I was so captivated by the burst gimmick because back in the day, this was my first burst Beyblade. Like before this, I only had metal, metal fight Beyblades and the metal fight Beyblades didn't explode. I don't know why, but I just thought the exploding gimmick was so cool. So what I used to do is I used to spin the Beyblade on the ground and then I used to just like chuck stuff at it to try to make it explode. And when it would explode, I would be like so dumbfound. I'd be like, oh my God, that's so freaking sick. Anyway, let's go over these parts. First off, we have the Wyvern layer. Wyvern was actually really good back in the day. It was really round, so it had really good stamina, so people like to use it in stamina combos. I actually like to use it in tornado stall combos. That's basically where you use an attack driver that has like a decent amount of stamina, and basically you just outspin the Beyblade by going around the ridge. They call it tornado stalling. So yeah, a really solid layer back in the day. Next up, we have the arm disc, and this thing is pretty light, although it had fairly good burst resistance because it was very hollow. And finally, we have the massive driver. Now, this thing is like literally a bad version of the defense driver. It's bigger than the defense driver, and because of that, it's a lot harder to control, and it has less stamina. So yeah, that is Wyvern Armed Massive. Let's move on to the next Beyblade. Next up, let's unbox a random booster. Here we have the original random booster. Random booster Volume 1, which is absolutely mind-boggling to think about because I'm pretty sure we're on... I don't even know what random booster we're on. We're on like random booster 27 or something. It is absolutely crazy. But this is the first random booster and I'm actually really excited to unbox it. I don't really want the prize today. What I really want is this white Spriggan right here. Like that just looks so gorgeous i really want the white spriggan obviously i'm not gonna be mad if we get the prize bay and then maybe the green spriggan or the red valkyrie would be pretty cool the other ones like i don't know ragnarok and kerbius the black kerbius i guess looks all right anyway let's just open this thing up the boxes are so much easier to open than these little plastic things like you just cut like the two corners and then or maybe not <laughs> there we go all right chuck the stickers let's see what beyblade we get Okay, black wrapping, that's cool. Let's open up the layer first. Ooh, the, I don't know, the plastic feels so different and these like earlier random boosters. It definitely feels a lot thinner, so that's nice. We can open it better. Oh, wait, did we get the prize bay? Wait, I, I don't, guys, I think we got the prize bay. I don't think there's other Beyblades like this. I don't think they put blue wrap, at least in the early random boosters, unless it's the prize bay. I think this might be the prize bay, guys. Guys, I think we might have actually pulled Trident. Okay, let's see. Dude, if it's not the prize bay. Wow, they, they really got us there. I saw like the kind of like yellowish gold there. It was like, oh my god, we full tried it, but no. How is this even different than like the normal colors? This looks exactly the same. Where's my Ragnarok? They're like the same. Okay, I guess it's like transparent, but it's like the same color. <sighs> All right, I guess we'll look at the parts. Next up, is this the disc? No, this is the driver. This is the disc. <laughs> Wait, what? Look how small this is! What kind of disc is this? This has to be like... This has to be like winged or something. Like this is tiny. Kind of like... Yeah, it's winged. Alright. Wing sucks. Final part here, we have the driver. Um, hopefully the driver's like claw or something. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Instead, we get this ugly defense driver. This ugly green defense driver. Alright, so that was actually really disappointing. I was... <laughs> I was really expecting to get Trident after we got, like, uh, the blue packaging, but instead... <laughs> this is probably, like, the worst pull you can get from this random booster. We have Ragnarok Wing Defense. I mean... It's, uh, no, I, there's, there's no redeeming factor behind it. Let's move on to the next one. All right, next up, I kind of want to just open the other random booster because the last one was such a disappointment, but this one really cannot be a disappointment because I don't think there is one bad pull. 
from this random booster. I think we went over all the Beyblades in this random booster, obviously besides Surprise Bay. Oh wait, no, we haven't opened Odin yet. We'll open Odin next. Anyway, so yeah, every single Beyblade in this random booster is just pure hype. Obviously, you have the Prize Bay Evil Eye, then you have Wyvern, which is a pretty good Beyblade as we went over before, then Valkyrie's a pretty good Beyblade, and then does say there is an amazing Beyblade. We haven't went over Odin, but Odin was actually the best single layer for its time. At least, I think it was the best. It had really good stamina, really good defense, and it was just a really solid Beyblade. Anyway, let's open this thing up. There's no disappointing pulse, so I won't be mad with whatever we get. Obviously, I think I want the prize bay the most, and then maybe... Ooh, maybe like Wyvern. I really like Wyvern. Again, it was my first Beyblade. So Wyvern or the prize bay, and I'll be happy. But really, I'll be happy with anything we get from here. Alright, let's open this up. There we go. There's no stickers. Or maybe there were stickers and it just fell out. Let's start off with the layer. Here we have the layer, and here is the deceiving blue wrapper. Maybe they just wrapped everything in like this blue wrapper before. But yeah, let's just open it up. Okay, please. Actually, I don't really care what it is, but it'd be so cool if you were evil eye. Oh, Odin! Okay, I'm not mad at that at, that at all. Alright, here we have a nice like crystal blue Odin. Oh, that's actually so sick. That's so cool. It's like toothpaste colors. This looks like my Crest toothpaste, guys. All right, let's move on to the other parts. I'm not sure what the other parts on this Beyblade are. Oh, it fell off. Oh, here we have the Claw Driver. This is actually really hype. This was like the prize part from the last random booster. So I'm happy that we actually got something good this time. And then finally, we have the disc. And for some reason, in these earlier random boosters, they really like... Um, whatchamacallit, they really packaged up these discs well, like they taped and everything. The disc is going to be... Uh, ooh, the arm disc, not terrible. So yeah, that's a pretty good combo. Here we have Odin Armed Claw. I like it, I like it. It's a very cool combo. It reminds me of Horror Suit. It has like Horror Suit vibes with like the claw and like kind of a disc that's like hollowed and lower to the ground. But yeah, um, I'm really satisfied with this pull. This pull's really cool, although I guess in this video we did not pull a prize bay. I definitely like Odin. I'm not so much of a fan of this Ragnarok, but let's just move on to the next Beyblade. Talking about Odin, here we have the single layer Odin Central Blow. Now, quick backstory, this Beyblade was actually banned from WBO tournaments just because it was just so dominant. Again, just like Death Sight, there had a very round design and like decent teeth because it was an attack type Beyblade. I don't know what's with Takeru Tomi and giving like attack type Beyblades like amazing stamina, but Odin and Death Sight there had amazing stamina and they kind of just broke the meta. I don't think Takeru Tomi was expecting people to actually use these attack layers for defense and stamina when they were making it, but that's what people did. Anyway, so yeah, here we have Odin, there we have, oh, I can't get this out, Central, and then Blow. First off, we have the Odin layer, and again, this combo was really good. As you see, it was very round, so it had amazing stamina and amazing defense, and the teeth were not terrible. That's, I mean, there's really nothing else to say about this. It's a cool Beyblade. <laughs> Next, we have the central disc, and I already went over the central disc with Kerbius. It's not an amazing disc, but it's not a terrible disc. It's like an extremely average disc. And next, we have the blow driver, which for lack of a better word, it blows. It's terrible. It's like Excel, but it's smaller and thinner. And although it's smaller, that gives it like a little more stamina. It's very thin, so it ended up getting like off balance really easily, and it makes the Beyblade scrape very easily. So overall, the combo on Odin isn't really that great. But Odin itself, like, the layer was just so dominant. And honestly, like, I actually really like the color scheme of Odin. I think it just looks so sick. Like, you got the silver and, like, the deep royal blue. Bro, it, I just think this looks so cool. I wish they would make more Odins. I think the last Odin we got was Knockout Odin in the Super King series, which was amazing. But they really gotta make a Dynamite Odin because Odin is just so sick. I just love its design and its colors. All right, let's move on to the next Beyblade. Guys, I know I said Odin was the most powerful single layer, but I take it back. This is definitely the most powerful single layer. Here we have Cheeto. Well, actually, this isn't really Cheeto. This is uh, Takeratomi's 
version of Cheeto here, we have Horsude. Now the problem with this compared to Hasbro's Cheeto is to Kiritomi, all single ears have this like clear ring around them. So it's kind of like nerfing Cheeto because Cheeto's main ability is that it's able to stain its opponent's Beyblades, but because it has a clear layer around it, it's not going to be able to stain it, so it's actually not that great. Anyway, let's open this thing up. First off, we have the layer horror suit, and I don't think horror suit was ever that great of a single layer. As you can see, its design is kind of jagged. It is much rounder than Ragnarok though, so it did have more stamina. The problem with horror suit is that its teeth were not the best, so it ended up bursting a lot. Next up, we have the spread disc, which I already talked about with Spriggan. It has decent burst resistance, but besides that, it is fairly light. And finally, we have the Edge Driver, and if I were to be honest, Edge is probably the worst driver that Dekeratomi released in the single layer era. It is just extremely off balance, it scrapes so easily, it was all stamina, it had no defense and no attack, but it's on Cheeto, so you know, it's good. So yeah, that is Horsuit Spread Fusion, let's move on to the next Beyblade. Next up, we have an extremely hyped release. Here we have Excalibur Force Extreme with a yellow string launcher. This thing had it all. I'll explain it after. Oh, even the back looks cool, guys. Anyway, I'll explain it after I unbox it. Beautiful. All right, so here is the Excalibur layer, and oh my goodness, it's flipping gorgeous. It has like crimson red with a giant gold sword going through it and two phoenixes on either end. It looks amazing. And something really funny is that the original avatar for Excalibur was, of course, a sword with two phoenixes. But then when it evolved into Siege Excalibur, it turned into like this mechazord robot thing holding a sword, which is cool as well. But honestly, I do like the phoenix is better. Anyway, so yeah, something, another interesting thing about this layer is that it's kind of deceiving to call it a single layer because it's actually comprised of two layers that make contact with other Beyblades. Of course, you have the red phoenixes and then you have the giant sword that protrudes out of the Beyblade. So technically, this guy is a dual layer. And not only that, this was the first Beyblade to include wider teeth to make the Beyblade more durable. So let me just compare the teeth of Excalibur to a Beyblade like Ragnarok. So as you see, Ragnarok has much thinner teeth than Excalibur. With the thinner teeth, the Beyblade's teeth would wear out over time, but with the thicker teeth, they were much more durable. Next up, we have the Force Disc, and the Force Disc was actually a pretty decent disc for attack. I don't really have much else to say about it. I guess it's like a cool, I was about to call it a triangle, but this is definitely not a triangle. It is a cool diamond, it is a cool parallelogram. Finally, we have the Extreme Driver, and this is just a rubber flat driver, but this was probably the best attack driver. I think it still is the best attack driver. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like Extreme Dash and Metal Extreme is still like the best attack driver and the attack driver of choice that people use now. So this driver is still competitive to this day and it came out in the single layer era, which is absolutely insane. So yeah, here is Excalibur Force Extreme. When this guy first came out, it was a competitive combo right out of the box. The Excalibur layer was probably the best attack type layer in the game at the time, just because it had this giant hit point of the sword, then the force disc was really good for attack, and the extreme driver was of course unparalleled compared to the other attack drivers at the time. So this combo was just flippin' amazing, and it also looks flippin' amazing. Like, oh my goodness, this Beyblade looks so good. Alright, let's move on to the next Beyblade release. Next, we have the Beyblade Custom Set Attack and Balance, and the reason I'm unboxing this is for the Minoboros Beyblade right here. I've actually never owned a single layer Minoboro, so I'm really excited. The other Beyblades in this set are pretty cool as well. We get a red Death Scyther and a yellow Spriggan, which look amazing, and they all come with colored discs, so I'm really excited. Also, there is a launcher included, or sorry, a launcher grip included, which is really cool as well. You can never have enough launcher grips. And here's the back, let's open this thing up. Ooh. Oh my goodness, look at those stickers, guys! <laughs> Screw the Beyblade, look at these stickers! Oh my god, the Minoboro stickers look so sick, its horns are on fire! That's so crazy! Alright, let's actually look at the Beyblade now, whoa! 
I'm actually in love with that launcher. That launcher grip looks amazing. Oh, and there's the Beyblades. Oh, I don't know what it is about colored discs, but they just make the Beyblades pop so much more. Anyway, let's get the Beyblades out of the package and let's actually talk about the Beyblades now. All right, let's go over the Beyblades. I'm going to save Minoboros for last. So first off, we have the yellow Spriggan layer. And this looked a lot cooler in the packaging. I'm not going to lie. Like in real life, I guess... I don't know, like the packaging makes it look so much cooler, but in real life it's just like this pea yellow. I don't know if I like it. All right, moving on to the next part we have, I think it comes with the blue spread disc. And oh, this thing actually looks so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I don't know. They should just color every disc. You know what I mean? It makes a big bait look so much cooler. It definitely reminds me of the blue disc that came on Longinus, the blue nine disc. This spread disc definitely has a similar color scheme. And then finally, we have this blue blow driver, which although it's very pretty, again, blow kind of blows. So yeah, that is the Spriggan Beyblade Spriggan Spread Blow. Honestly, kind of like... <laughs> A tongue twister. Spring and spread blow. All right, anyways, move on to the next one. Next, we have this red Death Scyther, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Again, Death Scyther was one of the best single layer Beyblades, so I'm always happy to get another one. And then we have this gold wing disc, which looks really cool. I feel like if we're going to get a recolor of a disc, it's usually gold. But you know what? I'm not complaining because gold honestly goes with every single Beyblade combo. Like, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then Finally, we have the fusion driver. This is kind of like a dark pink recolor, which is really cool because we don't get that many uh, pink Beyblade parts. And yeah, this is the recolor Death Scyther Wing Excel. And honestly, again, like the recolor discs makes a Beyblade look so much cooler. The colored disc looks so amazing on this Beyblade. Let's move on to the final Beyblade and the actual prize Beyblade of this set. Here we have Minoboros, and oh, actually, Minoboros is so sick. Oh my goodness, I've actually never had a single layer Minoboros. So looking at this thing is so cool. Like you see the horns are so big. That's so cool. And it definitely reminds me of Excalibur. It definitely has an Excalibur kind of shape with one giant contact point right here. Although it doesn't protrude as much as Excalibur's sword. Anyway, so yeah, that is Minoboros. Let's move on to the next part. Ooh, next we have this awesome red colored disc. So this is oval. And again, oval isn't that great, but I don't know. Like the red oval looks amazing. Like it looks awesome. And then finally, we have this kind of deep blue quake driver, which looks absolutely gorgeous. And although Quake isn't that great, it's probably one of my favorite single layer drivers just because it's really fun to use. Because of its weird like shape, it makes the Beyblade hop in the stadium and it's just like super fun. So yeah, here is the prize Beyblade in the set, Minoboros Oval Quake. And from this like perspective, it looks absolutely sick. You get the red and like the deep blue, it looks awesome oh my goodness this thing looks so amazing i'm so happy it's in my collection all right let's move on to the next beyblade next up we have neptune armed zephyr let's open this guy up so first off, here is the layer Neptune, and Neptune was actually one of the best single layers because of its very round design. It had very good stamina. It was used mainly for, well, stamina combos and defense combos, and it was fairly dominant. I think the best layers in the single layer era for stamina and defense was obviously Death Scyther, Odin 2, and then Neptune. These three Beyblades kind of like conquered the meta. They dominated it. But yeah, and honestly, I really like its design as well. I definitely do like the sea green used for the Neptune avatar. It looks flippin' sick. And I really like the shape of the layer as well. It's like waves, which looks so flippin' sick. All right, let's move on to the next part. Next, we have armed. We saw this like two other times, so I really don't want to talk about it. And finally, we have the Zephyr Driver. Now, the Zephyr Driver is a whole flat driver, acts very similar to Excel. Honestly, they're kind of the same driver. It's just that Zephyr has like slightly more stamina. So yeah, this is Neptune Arm Zephyr. I really do like the neon orange driver, though it really pops compared to the compared to the blue layer. And this is probably one of my favorite single layer Beyblades, just because I remember back in the day, like when I only had a couple Beyblades, I had Neptune, and Neptune was just so good. So I have a lot of good memories with Neptune. All right, let's move on to the next Beyblade. Finally, we're on to the last Beyblade of this video. Here we have Yidrasil Ring Gyro. I've actually never owned a Yidrasil, so I'm really excited to unbox this guy. 
So here is the Yggdrasil layer and it actually has a really nice slope to it. I was not expecting that. But yeah, it's honestly like a really solid Beyblade. It doesn't look that bad, although I don't remember it being that great back in the day. Maybe it was because of its teeth. No, the teeth don't look terrible. All right, yeah, I don't know. This Beyblade doesn't look that bad. It seems like it would have decent stamina and decent defense. Well, I guess if you're competing against like Neptune and Death State, there like no one really stands a chance. But yeah, I actually really love Yggdrasil. And the anime, I think it was like a, it was like a kind of like a tree dragon, which looks flippin' sick. All right, let's move on to the next part. Next, we have Ring. And Ring is honestly just a super simple design, but for some reason, I flippin' love it. I remember it being decent back Back in the day like some people use it in competitive combos because as you see most of the weight is towards the outside of the disc which gave Beyblades more stamina but honestly I think heavy was probably the more preferred disc compared to ring and then finally we have the gyro driver and the gyro driver was really hype at first it was our first free spin driver but it ended up not being that great I don't remember why gyro is not that great it's just not amazing I'm pretty sure like it had less stamina than uh, survive for some reason so yeah it didn't have that much stamina surprisingly even though it's like a free spinning driver like it's basically bearing but not and yeah it had less stamina it was weird all right so yeah this was Yggdrasil ring gyro okay so you know how I said Yggdrasil was the last Beyblade we were going to unbox that was actually a lie for those very observant viewers we never unboxed unicorn ring defense and that's because I went on eBay and when I was trying to look for a unicorn ring defense like in box they were going for flipping like $200 and I'm not paying $200 for a flipping unicorn Beyblade so instead I went on eBay and I found this listing of this giant Beyblade product here is the Beyblade Kirin set it comes in this awesome suitcase and basically what it is it's a set that contains every single stock combo single layer plus the first four dual layers and yeah I found this on eBay for $500 so I was like why would I buy like a $200 Beyblade when I can get that $200 Beyblade and like a $500 set so I bought the whole entire set honestly I probably should have just like showed off this set instead of unboxing every Beyblade individually but that would have made a good video. So instead, I just bought every single Beyblade individually and the $500 set. This was a very expensive video, so if you guys could subscribe, that would make me feel a lot better. Anyway, let's open this thing up. I just want to show you guys all the Beyblades in this set. It's so flippin' sick. Oh my god, that's so cool, guys! It's so cool! Look at all these Beyblades! But yeah, let's show off Unicorn right here. Oh, this is so cool! Also, we do have the prize Beyblades that we didn't pull in the random booster. Here we have an upside down Trident, and then here we have an upside down Evil Eye. But right now, we are going to look at the Unicorn Beyblade. Here is Unicorn Ring Defense. Oh my god, this is so amazing. All right, so first off, we have the Unicorn Layer, and I actually really like the Unicorn Layer. I like the neon... I can't even, I can't even, like, register what's going on, because I'm trying to talk about this Beyblade, but then in the background, it's just the, the holy grail of single layers. <laughs> Anyway, here is Unicorn. It's very pretty. It's very cool. I like its horns. Next up, we have the ring disc, and it's gold. It's flippin' gold. But these things are so much cooler. These things are so much cooler. And then finally, we have the driver, which is defense. Oh my god, look at this. I think the suitcase is so sick. You can put, like, whatever Beyblade you want in it. Oh, it's so cool. They fit so well. Oh, oh, oh. And let me just show you the other side. This side right here. It has, like, Beyblade engraved. Kirin Beyblade engraved on it. It is so sick. Is this worth $500? Um, the suitcase itself, obviously not. But the Beyblades, actually the Beyblades might be worth $500. This was a pretty good snag. For, like, $500, you get every single single layer Beyblade, which they're actually pretty rare now. And then you get, like, the first four dual layer Beyblades, plus a recolor version, like a special recolor version of a Victory Valkyrie. And this is a green Victory Valkyrie, and it looks absolutely stunning. So yeah, I guess I'll show off the prize base that we didn't pull. Here we have uh, Trident. This is Trident Heavy Claw. Ooh, actually, I didn't know the Claw Driver was colored this way. I thought the Claw Driver was orange, but it's definitely a more yellow color. Trident's cool. I've actually never used it because I've never owned a Trident. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we have uh, Evil Eye, and this is Evil Eye Wing Needle. Oh, I think this was the first time Needle was ever released, and then they released it on Unlock Unicorn. Uh, Unlock Unicorn was always a bad Beyblade, so I always associated Needle with being bad, but maybe it's good on Evil Eye. Anyway, the Evil Eye layer actually looks really cool. I don't know, like, what they were going for with Evil Eye uh, originally. Maybe, I know, like, the dual layer exceed Evil Eye is, like, a dragon kind of thing, but I think Evil Eye might have just been a giant eyeball in during its single layer days, or, like, the avatar for the single layer Evil Evil Eye was a giant eyeball. Actually, no, never mind. There is a dragon up there, so I guess it was a dragon. But yeah, Evil Eye's probably one of the rarest single layer Beyblades, if not the rarest single layer Beyblade besides Amaterios. I do not have Amaterios with me. That is the one single layer we are missing because it is like the prize of the prize base, and I just maybe I'll have to buy it. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, this is Evil Eye, a really cool Beyblade. Alright, I think this is like a fitting way to end off the video, just showing off every single single layer Beyblade in this case. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe, this was a very expensive video. If you guys want to see another unboxing video like this, like an unboxing haul, where I unbox like maybe all the dual layers, or all the god layers, leave a like, and I might do that in the future. And please pray for my editor Felix, because he's gonna have to edit like an hour long video. I'm sorry Felix. Alright, subscribe for Felix, bye. <laughs> I've spent countless nights editing and editing, clicking away at buttons. I've spent countless mornings drinking a cup of monster energy drink or a cup of coffee. Every single day I'm pushing buttons just to make enough to buy a McChicken from McDonald's. Subscribe so I can afford a McChicken from McDonald's.